What's going on guys, it's Mike. Today we're talking to Laura, who is a seasoned marathoner and runner to get her perspective on the Apple Watch Series 4 and whether or not you should upgrade. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm just the average runner. I started running in 2009. It was a 5K training program to get out of the house and meet people. Uh, come 2010, I was in an inner office competition where somebody said, hey, I'm gonna run the marathon. And I thought, I've been running a while, why not? So I joined the charity team and I trained for my first marathon. Um, I'd never even run a half at that point, a half marathon. So my first experience was awful. And I kind of just kept going here and there. And it wasn't until a few years later, while I had been uh, helping train other people for half marathons and 10Ks that I said, I'm gonna do this again. So uh, 2014, I endeavored to run the New York City Marathon and the Chicago the Marathon the same year. They're around a month apart. Uh, since then, I think I can call myself a marathoner, but I'm still average. And I just keep going every year. It's a great part of my life. I am currently using the Apple Watch Series 4 in Summit White Sport Loop Nike Plus Watch. I am a marathon training pacer, so I'm always um, trying to keep aware of what the current pace is, what the average pace is for the entire run. The new feature of rolling pace is really great because it means that the current mile that you're running, you're finding out what the pace is of that mile. Um, I'm trained to look at my watch or uh, announce pace. I'm supposed to do it every quarter mile, but I don't want to drive my runners nuts when we're running 20 miles. So I usually just do it every mile. So rolling pace is a really effective way to uh, check in along the mile run and tell people, hey, we're on pace or we need to slow down, slow down guys. When I'm running consistently, I like to run around three or four times a week. The typical length of my runs, trying to fit it in 30 to 45 minutes normal runs. During training, uh, always goes higher six plus miles on a typical training weekend. On long runs during half training, is always going to be double digits, so anything 10, 12, 16 miles. I do not like to take my phone with me for many reasons. One, I have little arms. So having a big old phone flopping around my arm, no matter what you say, I will not find a armband that'll fit my arms. Uh, one of the main reasons I always get the Apple Watch with cellular connection is because I run without my Apple Watch and I take advantage of calling, of uh, streaming music, all of those things when I'm running without my phone. It's the only way I'll do it. The last training run of marathon training season was a little six mile run. Um, the entire season, which is four and a half months long, uh, my Series 3 Nike Plus Apple Watch with GPS uh, would get me in around 6.25 every weekend. Um, so I just deferred to all the other runners in my group just to double check, hey, where are you guys at to get to that six miles. When I ran my last run with my new watch, it was 6.03 with the F Series 4. I was so excited. It was actually so close to accurate. So um, I think the accuracy is increasing. Based on my experience so far with the Series 4 as a runner, I don't think the upgrades of the watch themselves are enough to make you want to change. I still really like my Apple Watch with GPS and cellular. Yes, it's great. Um, do I think it's worth it to upgrade to from Series 3 to Series 4? If you're cost sensitive, ouch, it's over $100 more expensive when you're not getting that much more of a watch. If you are somebody who's way clumsier than me, because I am pretty clumsy, fall detection might be something like a draw for you. Great, Series 4. If you are somebody who has a history of heart issues, the new EKG function, probably good for you. We don't know yet, hasn't come out. Um, and the bigger screen, bigger screens are, who doesn't like a bigger screen on anything? It's great. Um, but end of the day, you're still getting the same battery life. You have the same activity app 
uh, cadence, rolling pace as Series 3. Um, it still has cellular if that's what you want and you don't want to run with your phone like me. Um, it just, it's not enough to, to say, go get it. For runners, if you don't have a Series 3 with GPS and cellular, um, and you're, whether you have Series 1, Series 2, you're thinking about making the upgrade, because the difference that affects runners between Series 3 and Series 4 is not so significant, I would say go with the Series 3. Um, the benefit of being able to run without your phone, I love. The safety issue of if you are out and about and something happens to you that you can, you can pull up your watch and call if you didn't if you don't have your phone with you if somebody stole your phone or something on you while you're on your phone unfortunately it happens um having cellular to me as a runner i think is pretty crucial um and so yeah i would say definitely if you have a series one series two upgrading to at least series three is worth it especially maybe holidays coming you want a present it's a good one to do we recorded this on October 7th, which was the Chicago Marathon. I wanted to give a shout out and congratulations to all of my runners that ran today, specifically Heather, Eileen, Jamie, Sarah, and Michelle. You guys did amazing. I'm so proud of you and see you next year, runners. So there you have it, folks. Laura's perspective on whether or not you should upgrade to the Apple Watch Series 4, given uh, which model that you have. Uh, let me know in the comments below whether you agree with Laura's recommendation or not. And if you are a more serious runner, are you using the Apple Watch or are you using a Garmin or a Polar? Let us know in the comments below as well. Do you guys like features like this? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let Laura know that we want to go ahead and see more of her on the channel. Uh, we appreciate her coming by. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you in the next one.